Hello fellow Twilight Zoners and welcome to another episode of TZ Watch, the show for reviewing all Twilight Zones ever made. So we are now, spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet by the way. Yes, you want to take that chance now before I start reading. Okay, it's on your heads. The Odyssey of Flight 33 is episode 54 of the American anthology, or the American television anthology series, The Twilight Zone. An unlikely break of the time barrier finds a commercial airliner sent back to the prehistoric age and then to New York City of 1939. The tale is a modern telling of the Flying Dutchman myth. It originally aired on February 24th, 1961 on CBS. Directed by Justice Addis, written by Rod Serling, featured stock music. Production code 173-3651. Original air date, um, already said above. So, guest appearances. Joe Anderson as Captain Skipper Father. Paul Comey as First Officer Craig. Sandy Kenyon as Navigator Megalon Hatch. Harp McGuire as Flight Engineer Purcell. Beverly Brown as Janie. Wayne Hefley as Second Officer Wyatt. Betty Gard as Passenger. Jay Overholtz as Passenger. Nancy Rennick as Paula. Lester Fletcher as RAF Man. And Robert McCord as Passenger. Now, for those outside the UK who don't know what the RAF is, it's the Royal Air Force. Just so you know. And the plot. The episode takes place on Global Airlines Flight 33 en route from London to New York City, about 50 minutes from Idlewild, Idlewild now Kennedy Airport. Captain Father and his crew notice that the ground speed of their Boeing 707 is rapidly increasing beyond all reason. Their true airspeed remains constant, so there is no risk of the plane breaking up. They can no longer contact anyone by radio. Even one of the passengers seems to sense the increase in speed. A flash of light is seen, accompanied by severe turbulence. Although the captain wonders if they have gone through the sound barrier, there is no apparent damage to the aircraft. Still unable to contact anyone on the ground, and at risk of, the, of potential collision, the other aircraft with other aircraft, Father finally decides to descend below the clouds. The crew is able to identify the coastline of Manhattan Island and other geographic landmarks, but there is no city. The crew realizes that they have traveled far back in time when they see the grazing dinosaurs. Their only hope of returning to the present day is to increase altitude and speed in an attempt to catch the same freak jet stream and return to 1961. At first it appears to work. After another flash of light and violent shaking, New York City is once again visible and although they still cannot contact Idlewild, they are able to reach... Magadia Airport, however, the air traffic controller on the radio does not understand references to Idlewild or to current aircraft technology such as VOR-2, uh, VOR-ILS and jet aircraft. The controller eventually clears the aircraft to land at Lagarda at Lagardia and orders the captain to report to the Civil Aeronautics Administration, or the CAA, office afterward. 
The captain remarks that they haven't called the Federal Aviation Administration by that name in years. The co-pilot spots the buildings and structures from New York's World's Fair of 1939 and 1940 below. They've come forward in time, just not far enough. And that is where I'm going to end reading this because I'm close to giving away the ending although if you stay to hear me read about all that then it's your own fault that you don't want to see the episode because I gave you the warning good episode go and give it a watch if you maybe don't care for spoilers and I'll tell you that Mr. Dingle the Strong is next up for review. Until then, thanks for watching in the Twilight Zone.